So I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Eric Contreras. Eric is a multidisciplinary engineer and designer with a focus in robotics and industrial design, um, respectively. The, their work revolves around personal expression in mass-produced tech that can be accomplished through open source innovation. And I'm proud to introduce Eric. I'll hand it over. Oh, 10 minutes, sounds good. Hello, how's everyone doing? Uh, hope everyone's having a good morning. Uh, out of curiosity, for changing slides, is just a, a click? Okay, perfect. Well, hello, my name is Eric Contreras. Oh, ay, Dios. Uh, back. Okay, let me, <laughs> oh, can I, <laughs> am I, am I, did I done, done do, uh oh. My apologies. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, I guess as we go through the, the technical aspect, uh-oh. Uh, should I, is it on my side? I mean, I can kind of go from this, the top and, and also multitask where I'm, <laughs> I think it'll be an uh, email on my end. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Oh, and this should be, get out of here. I should say share. And it should be coming up, maybe. Yes. Perfect. Oh, ooh, these are the older ones. <laughs> well, we'll do what we can. Um, all right, so hello, my name is Eric Contreras. I am a graduate researcher from the University of California, uh, Davis. Uh, I come from a very multidisciplinary background. On one hand, I am a uh, MFA uh, graduate student in design, specifically industrial design and design for repair. And then on the other hand, I am a, also a graduate student in uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering uh, in open source robotics and autonomous systems. Uh, and I'll kind of dive on that near the end. So I'll kind of dive a little, I'll discuss a little bit on the background uh, of my work. Um, so a lot of this work um, is uh, around e-waste. Uh, ooh, are you sure there's no, <laughs> there's the newer, or this is the most recent slides. Uh, I guess we'll do a scope from here. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, so a lot of the motivation in my work uh, is uh, based around um, uh, the reuse of electronic waste and um, uh, um, how we can best uh, uh, buffer a lot of the accumulation that we see in our world. Um, one of the biggest issues has been uh, with uh, issues uh, with plant obsolescence uh, that we can kind of see here uh, from I fix it. Um, oh, I, I <laughs> uh, ooh. Is there, there's no, I guess we'll just, um, which we, which uh, right here we have a photo of um, the uh, uh, Microsoft Surface, which had a zero out of 10 for my fix it, kind of uh, rem removing a lot of aspects of uh, potential hacking and, and um, uh, that comes with, uh, with our um, electronics. Uh, kind of going forward, I've been seeing a lot of work around um, uh, the maker movement and the movement in open uh, source communities, uh, certain aspects of like no, Mom, no computer with his um, or Furby organ, as well as the work that's being done by Eric Paulos at the uh, uh, Jacobs Institute in Berkeley, uh, trying to find personal expression through, um, um, through um, obsolescence and obsolete tech. Uh, this was a huge motivator for myself. I grew up in the Bay Area. Uh, seeing a lot of innovation, and with innovation, a lot of waste. Uh, as, a, as a child of the 90s, there was this whole battle around uh, data storage. Uh, shout out to iOmega with their use of like jazz drives and um, uh, zip uh, disk, and, and I think also the industrial, the industrial design that came with iOmega's work. And so uh, just seeing all of this innovation and creativity and, and effort being put in these, these spaces to be put into the, the garbage, being considered useless, was such a, a frustrating aspect. So as I, I was an avid dumpster diver throughout the 2000s, 2010s, and even to, the day, and to this day, trying to find alternatives of this, of this waste that just, uh, I don't know, it just felt wasteful. <laughs> so uh, this led to me to um, you know, accumulate, a, uh, I guess, a surplus of of, of electronics, trying to find new homes for it. I, I consider myself a foster parent of, of electronics. And I found this in a lot of communities, specifically in, oop, 
going a little too far ahead, um, like the uh, like in the console system. So I felt that, you know, when it came to electronics, it was a very fractured dynamic between the producers and um, you know how we recycle it. And I felt that we there was opportunities or uh, good good examples of repurposing waste um, and and finding new homes and new uses of electronics. Uh, through the console market, through the video game community, especially with Game Boys, and I felt that was mm, that was like a, a light in my head as I kind of dove into my my MFA at the university. So, uh, one of the key questions is how can we extend the lifespan of our products, and what can we learn from this? Uh, to me, I feel they are great learning experiences because the the the, um, the bar of entry is extremely low. You know, a lot of these times, waste uh, electronics are being thrown away. Uh, with no cost to ourselves. And I think in contrast, we should look at like, if, uh, right here I have my, my new phone, and I think for me, I try to keep it factory setting. There's, there, I want it to be factory clean. I want to make sure it's perfect. But give it a few more years, and it, it, it opens up a new opportunity. And, and it kind of removes that. Once that mystique of newness comes out, it, it can, we can go at it and try to, to see how everything works and to see the kind of the humanity and the technology that surrounds us in our everyday lives. So. Uh, there's definitely, um, and I think also through that, it, it's about instilling this opportunity of, of, of our, our artistic expression or our identity on technology um, that has been, um, that comes from nameless or faceless corporations that have been mass produced. And I think that's a very special part because technology surrounds us uh, um, all the time. So, um, kind of diving into my exploration and findings through this practice, a lot of this work was done from 2020 to 2022 uh, during the height of the pandemic. Uh, so this this whole motivation came from scarcity, um, especially I don't know if everyone I, I'm sure it's still fresh in the mind when uh, Raspberry Pis were a bit of a uh, had its weight in gold uh, during the pandemic. And I tried to create uh, an office of hacked objects, or, or my, my dumpster office. This is a, a collection of uh, electronics that I hacked together using uh, dumpster uh, components I found through dumpster diving at, at Davis uh, during the pandemic. Um, certain key aspe aspects would be um, uh, my uh, webcam made from an old camcorder, uh, my uh, Arduino Autotype or a printer, and then a uh, Echo answer machine. And as I kind of dive into it, I want to kind of point out the nuance of hacking obsolete tech, because some are completely open source and others are closed source. And I think the Echo is a great example where, you know, I am repurposing an Amazon Echo, but, uh, you know, that's a very closed source system. And I personally do not like any corporation near my, my, my living space. So this is a, this is a back burner project that I'll dive more into as we go to. And out of curiosity, how, how are we doing with time? Five, six, okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, so the first project is the Arduino uh, Autotype, which is a, a typewriter that I con converted into a, a text-based printer. And how it worked was I w uh, documented all of the traces of the keyboard and then tried to replicate and tried to map out each keystroke to the combination of these, uh, these traces. Um, this was driven by an Arduino Uno, so what I would do is I would have my Word document that would be fed into the terminal of the Arduino IDE that was then fed into a uh, 8-bit shift register that then was outputted through relays, and uh, that would print out my text document. And I think it ties into a lot of the limitations, you know, playing with the limitations that you're given. Um, and as I kind of like, was, I was trying to find ways of incorporating ASCII art when it would otherwise have a, you know, photo in my text. And um, so this is kind of a close-up. And uh, I do want to argue that this would probably last longer uh, than any of my HP printers that I've dealt with in my, my office space. Um, and I feel that I will put money that I think in 50 years in the future, I will be able to continue having this in operation as a, as a printer in my office space. So I think there's a lot of power when it comes to uh, creating these kind of hacked objects. Uh, I do also want to shout out a lot of the help that came from the open source uh, community. Um, especially when it came to typewriters. I think, I think when you're hacking an object like this, it creates an invitation uh, from people from different backgrounds. And so I was on the typewriter forums asking about resources of, of refilling ink and, and finding different font and font bases. And that led to a lot of discourse with that otherwise, of a community that I otherwise not interact with. So I think when we go into these uh, hacker objects, we, we tend to invite other people. I think there's always this fun, uh, this, uh, this expectation, this, this hope that I'll maybe reach, reach out to one of the engineers that worked on it back in the, 
Uh, I believe this was from the late 80s and see if there's some, some insight of how it was built. Um, one fact I do want to kind of leave off with is that, you know, as we're hacking objects, uh, you know, we, we are, um, you know, we can put our own per values or inspirations into our tech. So here I would have, um, you know, I have a, a huge affiliation with neon and colors and trying to make sure that, you know, the technology that I have surrounded me, it, it welcomes the user inside and out. So things are labeled um, amidst the rat's nest of, of cave lane. Um, next to the project was the kind of webcam quarter. Uh, which unfortunately the video is not showing, so we will skip over that. But pretty much it was it was trying to take um, the pre-existing RCA video output as well as sound output and making a cam uh, webcam out of it, uh, given um, us utilizing um, you know for uh, Zoom calls at the time. Um, and I think for this this final one is is something that I'm kind of more more contemporary and something I'd like to to tie on to. I think it kind of ties on one of my frustrations. I uh, was repurposing a closed source project, which is the um, the a uh, Amazon Alexa. And during the last few years, I've been trying to find ways of incorporating Mycroft, which has ceased, which was an open more open source AI uh, project that ended up ceasing operations in 2023. So I'm hoping as AI starts becoming more prevalent and more, there'll be more open source projects, we can start, I can start, we can start tweaking and seeing where the data, you know, goes rather than some nameless corporation. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. In terms of future work, uh, my focus in, at the university is now focusing, oh, okay, one minute, is focusing on multidisciplinary education. I think a lot of the uh, practice in, in hacking our objects comes from different uh, different uh, um, disciplines, whether it's from design, whether it's from uh, CS or engineering, and just the general maker community. Um, I feel that we get more power from the communal aspect of this work and have it where it's very inclusive, welcoming newcomers and people with experience. Um, so I will kind of like rush through, but I, I do feel that, um, let me just kind of go into closing, but I, I thank you for your time. Um, I would like to speak more on like current work that I'll be working doing, which is in open source robotics. Um, I'm with the university creating a, um, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, a autonomous vehicle racing uh, team. So I, I'm more than happy to talk about that after the talk, but we can, we can kind of wrap up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, you can feel free to contact me. <laughs>